everybody sits on the other, obviously. And I'm going to read something today, um, but before I do that, I want to ask a question of feminists. Not the radical murder everybody feminists, not the uh, kill male babies feminists, not the worldwide castration day feminists, or the eugenics exterminate half of mankind feminists, no, no, no. Because, as we know, not all feminists are like that, right? No, I want to ask this question of the humanist, sane, down-to-earth, you know, uh, feminism is just about equality feminists. This is who I'm addressing this question to. What I'm about to read is real, okay? It's not a hyperbolic rant. It's reporting and commentary on stuff that is in the news. It's confirmable. There's a lot of links. I'll put those in the low bar. It's real. What I want to ask you is, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about the crazies, the ones who control the courts, who control the education system, who argue for, you know, extermination of half the human race. What is it that you're doing about the crazy feminists, the ones operating under the same banner that you claim just means equality? What are you doing about it? What are you doing to self-police your own movement? That's a real question. It's not a rhetorical question. I want an answer. I want a lot of answers, but we'll get to that. The article is called Canada, a First World Country, written by Diana Davison and John Hembling, me. January 18th is an important day for Canada. It's a day that should be flagged in history and remembered annually as a moment that marks a monumental change in the direction of society. It is now, as of the 18th, Canadian National Disposable Mail Day. And Canada is paving the way for a brave new world in which men are, officially, insignificant in the eyes of the law. On January 18th, one year ago, the Supreme Court of Canada made a decision. They found that Nicole Ryan, who now uses her maiden name, Nicole Doucette, had been acquitted of her admitted crime due to an error in law. The crime was trying to hire somebody to kill her estranged husband. The Supreme Court of Canada acknowledged that justice had not been served, but put a stay on prosecution for a retrial because they felt Nicole had been through an emotional ordeal. On January 18th, Canada judicially stopped caring about attempted murder when the criminal has a vagina because of her feelings, because Nicole had been through a lot of stress and had lost weight, because Nicole, as a woman, was looking a little peaked. While men's human rights activists know that women being absolved of responsibility for their crimes against men happens all the time, this case is unique. The Crown Prosecutor, along with every legal professional versed in the case, presumably aside from the defense attorney, was shocked with the acquittal. The husband, Michael Ryan, was not called to testify because the prosecutor felt the case was a slam dunk. He didn't need to subject Michael to the trial proceedings, and yet, she was acquitted. Nicole confessed to her undercover RCMP assassin that Michael had never physically abused her. Link in the low bar. Nicole's accounts of the threats and the fear that she harbored were inconsistent. Nicole's husband lived 180 kilometers away from her at the time and had custody of their child because psychological assessments deemed Nicole less stable as a parent. Nicole, prior to these events, also tried to kill her sister by running her over with a car. Twice. But Canadian Justice David Farrar decided that Nicole, despite lacking any corroborating evidence for her story, was telling the truth and acted in the only way any rational person would, that is, by contracting the death of another person. Congratulations, Canada. Murder is now a rational choice. If you have a vagina. To be fair, the Supreme Court recognized that the judge, David Farrar, made a mistake. He failed to apply the laws properly, and Nicole's defense of duress was not an admissible defense for the crime for which she was accused. It was similar to claiming that the devil made her do it. At the time, Canada did not, at the level of Supreme Court, accept the existence of Satan. This might have caused Nicole problems. 
if she'd been a man. What Canada decided to do about this situation was, again, unique. January 18th marks the day when the law put the health of a person accused of attempted murder above the concerns for the crime of attempted murder. Caution. Don't try this at home. Unless you have a vagina. Appeals are a specific thing. In law, you can only appeal a case if there was an error in the application of law. You can't appeal just because you didn't like the decision. This is a point of confusion for many people. The prosecutor in Nicole Ryan slash Doucette's case was well versed in law and the appeal pointed out that her defense was illegitimate. This ended up being held against the prosecutor even though he was right. The Supreme Court of Canada recognized that the prosecutor was correct and that Nicole should be retried for trying to murder her ex-husband but they stayed the retrial for the following reason. Quote, the abuse she suffered and the protracted nature of these proceedings have taken an enormous toll on her. End quote. The abuse that Nicole suffered was actually the bone of contention. Nicole was not only free from duress, she was also free from abuse. Her abuser lived almost 200 kilometers away. Indeed, Nicole admitted during a videotaped interview with the RCMP that her ex-husband had never physically abused her, and that he had not kidnapped their child, as she had previously claimed. Rather, he had been granted custody after an investigation by child advocates in family court decided that she was not the better parent. It takes a lot in Canada for a mother to be deemed unfit. Nicole's abuse seems to have been that she didn't think she was going to get her fair share of property holdings. Her father was keen to help her secure a financially sound future, and he participated in the acquisition of a hitman. Time. Now time for a comedic break. They first tried to convince a local fisherman to kill Michael Ryan by shoving $25,000 at him. The fisherman took the money but didn't kill anybody, because what are they going to do? Report him to the police? By the time Nicole figured out that fishermen don't make good killers, other than killers of fish, just by virtue of their masculinity, she was getting a little pressed for time. Perhaps that's when she started losing weight and looking a little stressed out. It must have been difficult for her to continue her job as a school teacher, training our youth to be moral and upright citizens while actively seeking the murder of her ex-husband. During this time, Michael Ryan was under no stress, by the obvious fact that he had no idea that a hitman was being hired to kill him. Only men have this privilege. Women, on the other hand, are constantly informed by feminists that they could be raped at any moment, so they carry the burden of worrying about their personal survival, where men are kept in a blissful and peaceful state of ignorance. Only the Supreme Court has been bold enough to recognize that ignorance of one's own impending death makes the threat less relevant. As of today, the stay of proceedings has reached its expiry date. Lawyers fumed and fretted, protested and objected, stated their cases and were validated, and it made no difference in holding Miss Doucette liable for her crimes. But while Nicole Doucette slash Ryan may never be forced to stand trial for the crime that she acknowledges committing, we will not forget. Quoting again, he was a six foot three former soldier and 230 pounds. She was a five foot 315 pounds. And yet it doesn't take 230 pounds or more than five foot three to hire an assassin. So we are here to celebrate a national event in a first world country. Canada has paved the way. We no longer have to wonder who is superior, who is in control, or which gender gets to decide who lives and who dies. The only demand upon women who find their spouses problematic is that they should try not to get caught. Trials, you see, are expensive and time-consuming. Indeed, Elizabeth Sheehy, a University of Ottawa law professor and a prominent legal activist with the Elizabeth Fry Societies, asked in the National Post last month, quote, Is it an appropriate expenditure of taxpayer dollars to prosecute battered women who murder? At full tilt, in light of the compassionate response of Canadian judges and jurors who hear all the evidence. Interestingly, Doucette admitted to RCMP that she had never been physically abused by her ex-husband, despite the attempt to use a narrative of abuse in her defense. But it costs the public a lot of money to prosecute women for crimes for which they will ultimately be absolved. However, another Canadian, also a professor of law at Dalhousie University, has a bit of a problem in just letting this day become a point of acceptance. 
Professor Archibald Kaiser has been tackling the issue from a point of view that feminists protecting Ms. Doucette didn't expect, and that's the enforcement of law. Yes, it's true. Some people still care about upholding the law, regardless of which genitals a murderer happens to be born with. Not many people, but they still exist. Of course, they have formidable adversaries. In the case of Her Majesty the Queen versus Nicole Patricia Ryan, we have the following interveners. The Attorney General of Ontario, the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies, the Women's Legal Education and Action Fund, and the Criminal Lawyers Association of Ontario. We'll pause here to say hello to Elizabeth Sheehy, a feminist legal activist who claims to be merely reporting the weather rather than creating it. But isn't interference considered a foul in sports? But there you have it. Canadian law is not a matter of upholding a civilized society anymore. It's just a sport, and the referees are feminists. There is, however, a bit of a problem standing in the way of Canadian National Disposable Mail Day. The problem is Professor Archibald Kaiser and men's human rights activists, like us. We can't speak for Professor Kaiser or know with certainty if he is in this for the long haul. What we do know is that men's human rights activists are marking January 18th as a day to remember. Don't cry for Michael Ryan. In the historical record, January 18th is the day Canada decided that trying women for attempted murder is unfair. Feminists rejoiced. On the other hand, human rights activists decided to do something about it. This is not a loss. It's an opportunity. And of course, two feminist legal activists, feminist lobbyists, and feminist law professors who have, until now, worked with the court's enthusiastic consent to legalize the murder of men. We are coming for all of you. So, that's, you know, that's the article, that's the reading of the article. And I just have a couple of comments to add, sort of afterthoughts. If you have watched me just read that, or you've read the original article, and you follow the links, and you understand that this isn't just rhetoric, this isn't just some guy on YouTube ranting, this is something happening in the real world, there are real legal advocates and activists pushing an agenda driven by ideology. And you might disagree with my characterization that I say that these activists are pursuing as their goal the legalization of murder. Maybe you want to phrase that in softer language. Fine. But you can't debate the reality that we have people committing murder or attempting to have murder committed by hiring a killer and suffering no legal consequence. That's Activism in pursuit of the legalization of murder. It's going on in Canada now. It's going on today. And it going on into the future. You Once you recognize that, you recognize the reality of that, if you do nothing about that, your inaction is basically agreement with that. I agree, that should happen. I like that. That's good. Continue on. Keep doing that. In addition, if you call yourself a feminist, if you pursue any kind of activism of any kind under the name feminism, you self-identify as a feminist, you have to understand that the people with real power, that is, the people influencing the courts, directing domestic policy, influencing the making of laws, they are pursuing the legalization of murder based on sex. That this group of people can be killed by this group of people. I mean, we're not there, it's not fully legalized yet. Creep, 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 it gets closer and closer. So if you understand that and you call yourself a feminist and do nothing and sit on your hands, then there is something deeply and seriously wrong with you. You must either stop calling yourself a feminist, stop claiming that feminism is about equality, or start fighting these people. Because if you do nothing, you're saying by your silence, I agree, keep doing that. Keep doing that under the brand name that I will give you cover for every time I say, well, feminism is just about equality. Now, if you're exercised about this enough to actually do something, to get off your hands, 
antique action, there's a couple of things you can do. The most obvious and the simplest is to subscribe to this channel and fill in the form, which there will be a link in the low bar, to the mailing list. Get on the mailing list and when we call on you to help us, you know, call on members of parliament to write letters to legal associations, you respond to that. Because this is an ongoing project. This is, if you're a Canadian, or, you know, if you're not a Canadian but you actually care about other people outside your own country, then this is something that you can actually do. This isn't, you know, something that's too big for you to tackle. This isn't hopeless. All it takes is a will and some effort. So, there's a form in the low bar. There's a link to a form where it'll see, you can fill in the form and get on a mailing list. And we'll be contacting people on the mailing list to let them know what we're up to, and from time to time asking for their participation to mail letters, to contact their local members of parliament, and so on. Um, or you can just sit on your hands and do nothing, and thereby give your silent agreement with however you want to characterize it, the pursuit of the legalization of murder. And, as always, I thank everybody for their very kind attention, and have a lovely day.